What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're going to be making a sci-fi gondola lift. So let's just dive into it. So I had a little bit of extra time open up this week and I thought I would take advantage of that time and make something a little bit bigger for this week's model. So if you're familiar with this channel, I really try to create these models in one sitting, usually just a few hours over the weekend. However, for this model, I actually did it over a few different days. And that's mostly why this week's video is so much longer than usual. And because I chose to do this model over a few days, I really think I lost track of time, and that's a big reason why this video went a lot longer than I planned it to. By doing it in one sitting, I really have a good idea of how long it's taking, so if I'm modeling for two hours, I can really quickly wrap things up, move on to the UVing and then the texturing. But because it was over a few different days, I really lost track of time and it was hard to gauge how long I actually spent modeling. And that's also why this week's video is just going to be a time lapse and a speed modeling video. However, if you're interested in seeing more of a real time video, I will be uploading one of those to my Patreon page, along with a separate video that includes the whole UV mapping process. So how I decided to approach this model was just focusing on one side. So as you'll see throughout this video, I just focus on modeling this one side of this gondola lift. And once I'm happy with those shapes and I'm done the UVing, I can simply just duplicate them over to create the other side of this lift. Same thing with the front and the back, I don't have to model both sides, I can just focus on one and then once that's complete, I can just duplicate that over to create the back. Now when you look at the gondola lift, it can be pretty overwhelming. There's a lot of different shapes going on, but when you really break it down, all it is is just a bunch of different cubes and cylinders in different shapes and sizes. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to slowly start blocking things out and we can start piecing things together. Now I did try to do this relatively quick, I didn't want to spend days and days modeling this. However, when it comes to objects like this, I really think if you spent a little bit more time on each and individual shape to make them look a little bit more complex and interesting, you could really have a great result in the end. I didn't really have a lot of time to do that for this week's video, so a lot of these shapes I just simplified, but if I was going to recreate this model and not video my whole process so I could do it over a longer period of time, I would definitely spend a little bit more time on each and individual shape to try to make them look a little bit more complex, or even add a few extra objects to make it look like there's more going on. That being said, I'm still really happy with how things turned out, so let's just continue blocking things out and we can slowly start bringing this gondola lift to life. Oh, and really quickly, I just want to give a big shout out to the references I used for this week's video. I used multiple different references, some off of Google Images, some off of Pinterest, but I used one in particular from the video game Wolfenstein, and that's created from an artist named Matthias de Velcier. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but I just want to give a specific shout out to this artist. I use a lot of your ideas and concepts in this week's video, so I just wanted to make sure I gave a shout out to you. All right, now back to the video. Let's just continue blocking things out.
So remember at the beginning of the video when I mentioned how there's going to be a lot of experimenting with these shapes? Well this next one's a good example of that. Here I really didn't know exactly how I wanted this attachment to the wheel to look. So I needed to experiment a little bit and play around with the shape. So once again, rather than focusing on topology and making sure I'm happy with all of that, it can really drag out the whole process. I'm just going to focus on the shape itself. Topology is always important, don't get me wrong. But while you're creating the shapes, I find that sometimes that can just hold you back in certain areas. And letting that go and just focusing on the shape itself can sometimes, at least for me, allows me to just experiment a little bit more. And then afterwards, when we do the whole youthing process, I can clean things up and make sure the topology is looking correct. So what I do here is just continuously hit three on my keyboard to preview smooth the object. And then I'll keep adding edge loops in certain places to strengthen up those edges. And then I'll jump back out and remove that edge and add it into a different place. And then kind of just repeat that process until I find some edge loops in places that I'm happy with. Once again, I didn't really know how I wanted the shape to look. So we're just gonna play around with it until I get into a shape that I'm happy with.
Now quickly jumping back to that destroyed shape from earlier. I don't even know how or what happened to this object, but we need to fix it. Now what I should have done is just rebuilt it from scratch, I should have just deleted this object because it's so destroyed, but for some reason I just wanted to reconstruct it and try to fix the problem. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to try to mess around with these vertices and fix this issue. Now once I'm done, you'll notice how there's some weird aliasing happening on those faces, and that's just because I was trying to straighten all of those vertices and edges to make it perfect. Once again, I could have just done this much easier by just deleting it and redoing it from scratch, but the struggles from trying to reconstruct it, I just had to come back to it a few times. And then once again during the UVing process, just to make sure everything's looking correct.
Alright, so here's the model in its finished form. So I simply went ahead and just duplicated all those objects we created earlier in the video to the other side. And then I went ahead and just grouped all of these objects up and just combined all of these shapes. So I decided to break this thing up into five different groups for the five different textures applied. Now I just want to emphasize how you go about texturing your objects is completely up to you and that's really dependent on how your model is going to be used. In this case, it's just gonna be shown for some cool renders for my YouTube channel, so I don't really have to worry about the amount of textures I have, but if you were gonna use this in a video game or something like that, first off, it's a little bit too high in polys. There's a lot I would do to reduce the polys, but besides all of that, I would definitely reduce the amount of textures. So what I could have done is just combine some of these to like the side walls and the front. I could have possibly put that on one texture map, but I just wanted to point that out ahead of time before we moved on to all of these textures. So like I said, I broke this model up into five different groups for the five different textures. So the very first group, I just combined all these shapes into the inside. Now I added a lot of these inside shapes throughout the UV mapping process. I originally wasn't gonna add any inside objects, but I thought it'd be cool to add a little bit of transparency in those windows. That way you can see a little bit of the inside of this lift. And I didn't wanna detail it too much. So as you can see here, I just simplified these shapes, added just a bench and a simple chair and some controls. But like I said, most of this isn't going to be seen in the renders. It's just to fill in that empty space and make it look a little bit more interesting. And this group also includes the windows as well. So the second group are the front and the back walls. So once again, I just duplicated that same object we created earlier on the front and I brought that back to the back. So these are actually using the same space in my UV map and it just makes modeling this whole object a little bit quicker when I can reuse those same shapes. And then the other group is the roof. So that's just all of the roof objects as well with these cords and wires. And then the fourth group are just the side objects as well as the some of the bottom objects. I originally was gonna have a bottom group as well, but I thought just six textures would just be way too many. I feel like five is already reaching quite a bit. So I thought it'd just be nice just to combine this all into one. And once again, all of these shapes on one side are the same UV space on the other. So I'm not using any extra space. I'm just duplicating those same objects over. And then the last group is just the wheels and the top objects. Once again, I could have combined the roof and the wheels probably into one, and I could have combined the front and the sides probably into one map, but I just decided to break these up into their own texture group. That way I can hopefully get a little bit more resolution in those final textures, in those final renders. And once again, all these objects on one side are the same as the other. I just duplicated those objects over. And I just wanted to point this out. I actually only modeled half of these objects on one side, and then I duplicated those over to create this side. And then once I had one side of the wheels, I just grouped those together and duplicated them over again to create the other side. So when you really break this thing up into what you have to model, you're really only modeling one wheel, and then I can just duplicate that over to create all the other three. So that is exactly how I broke this thing up. And if you're interested in seeing the whole UV mapping process, I will upload that to my Patreon page and that will be in real time. So hopefully it's really easy to follow along. All right, so now let's jump over to Substance Painter and we can start texturing. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. Now, just like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm not gonna be explaining the whole process. It's just gonna be a time-lapse or a speed modeling video. But I just wanted to mention, I basically use all the built-in materials that Substance Painter comes with. So I just use a lot of smart materials and applied those to a lot of my meshes in my scene and just tweaked some of those colors and settings and added a few extra dirt and grunge effects on top of them. So just like I do when I texture any 3D model, I really don't focus on getting everything perfect right off the start. I find if you worry too much about getting everything dialed in right off the bat, you can really drag out the whole texturing process and you end up just coming back to it anyways to touch up things. So I find if you can just focus on filling in all of those empty meshes with materials, you can always jump back to these textures and materials later on and tweak them and adjust those colors and settings to get them closer to what you have in mind. Oh, and really quickly, don't forget to change your shader settings so you can add an opacity channel to your textures. That way you can actually see through your windows. 
I've been asked that a few times and I'm doing it right here. So in the top right corner, you can go up to shader settings and just remember to change it to alpha blending. That way you can go down and add an opacity channel. And like I mentioned, you need an opacity channel to actually see through the object. All right, so really quickly, just before we start anything, I'm just gonna jump to those windows and I'm gonna add that glass film smart material that comes with Substance Painter. And because we added that opacity channel to our texture set, that glass film material is gonna work properly and you're actually gonna see through it. I thought just filling in those windows first would just help me visualize all of these objects and materials. Maybe it's just how my brain works, but I just really quickly wanted to get those windows out of the way. Now we're going to come back and add some more dirt and grunge on top of them. But like I said, I just wanted to get that see-through material on those windows first, and then we can start texturing some other objects in my scene. So once I apply that glass fill material to those windows, I'm actually going to quickly jump to my sidewall texture set list, just so I can start texturing on my sidewall first. I thought it would make most sense since that's one of the largest objects in my scene is the whole side wall of this gondola lift. So I thought I would start here. Now to be honest, I really didn't know exactly how I wanted this gondola lift to look. In a lot of cases when I do these models, I kind of have a direction I'm working towards or I kind of know how I want those end results to look like. But in this case, I really didn't know exactly how I wanted it to look, so I definitely had to experiment a little bit more along the way. So that's what you'll see throughout the whole texturing process, is just applying different materials to these objects as I'm just trying them out to seeing how they're looking, and then I just quickly remove them. So let's just keep applying these materials to these empty meshes, and we can slowly bring to life our gondola lift.
All right, so that's basically everything. That is the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this gondola lift. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to see more weekly 3D content. I think something like 60% of you are not even subscribed, and I'm on a mission to get to 10,000 subscribers, so if you'd like to help me get there, don't forget to smash that subscribe and like button. And if you feel like supporting the channel even further, as well as get access to additional content, check out my Patreon page, which I will link in the description below. I will also be uploading a real-time version of this video to my Patreon page, along with a separate UV mapping process, which you can find on there as well. All right, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,